Hello and welcome to Crime and Justice. After I did my live last night, I started thinking about the Birmingham riots and how they were saying it was in Bordesley Green. So, I get up this morning because I wasn't going to do it last night, I was tired. So I got up this morning and I went on to my Google Maps. Now, bear in mind, I used to live in Birmingham, right? But the area has changed so much, especially around where I used to live and I grew up, right? And I was thinking, where is that in Baldsley Green? Where is it? So I went on Google Maps. And I typed in the name of the pub, right? And it brought the place up in Yardley. So I typed in the name of the pub again and put in Borgsley Green because that's where it said the riots were going off on. It came up as Yardley. I will show you here, right? And um, I'm going to show you on the maps. Hold on, get this off. There's the clumsy swag. Here. And I'm going to zoom in so that everyone who's seen those videos will recognize the area on the videos, right? I didn't recognise the area, believe it or not, because I never knew that as the clumsy swan. I knew that pub as the yew tree. The yew tree. And why it got that name was because of this tree. Right? So... It threw me when it was saying the clumsy swan. I should have clicked because just up here, up here, right up that road there, is the swan shopping centre. But I still didn't recognise the area. I'm thinking, you know what I mean? On the video, I couldn't fathom where it was. The clumsy swan, I'm thinking. I didn't recognise none of this. Now I've gone onto the maps and I've seen it. I'm, I know where I am. It just threw me because I always knew that as a U tree pub. Right? Plus, I've been up in Scotland now since 2008, 2009, 2008. Right? So things have changed dramatic, dramatically in Birmingham. Why are I saying it's Borgsley Green? Right? And I'm going to take you out the take you right out. Take you right out. Right? Because it definitely says Yardley. Look, see on the maps? This road, right, that used to be part of a park. There's the Oakland's Recreation Park, where I grew up playing. Here, all this. I grew up in that park, right? And years ago, this play, this uh, company brought so much of the land. And to be honest with you, it wasn't doing any good. It was just some empty old shops here. A uh, few houses or empty houses. It was nothing. Right? So, by doing what they did, they reno renovated the area. There's the Swan Shopping Centre, which I used to go to every weekend with my mum when I was little. I'd go up there with my friends. Tell you why? Because I lived just here. There's the Holiday Inn Express. Um, I lived in this road. Um, 
I lived here in this road. I will even show you whereabouts I lived in this road. Like a, a garage for repairs and things like that. And I remember it being knocked down. Knocked down completely. Then I remember it being turned into offices. Right? And then that, over the years, that's closed. And it's now been turned to, to a hotel. Right? Here is where I used to live. This is where I grew up as a child. Why isn't it going? Ah, it is. Right, this is where I grew up as a child. Right? And where am I going? Right? Hold on. Just up a bit. Just up a bit. Is it that house? Yeah, this house. Right? This is where I grew up as a child. Right? Now, my mum, my dad sadly passed away in 2006. And my mum passed away, sadly passed away in 2019. So, I don't know who lives there now. This was done in July 2023. So, I don't know who lives there now. But that's where I grew up. Now we go out again. And I grew up, there was always a, a sort of a sticky issue. Was it hay mills we grew up in or was it Yardley? Sometimes when, like when I grew up, they didn't have internet, so you wrote letters or you sent postcards, right? If you went on holiday and you always got back before your postcard reached them. Always. So it was always a sticky point. Did you put Yardley or did you put Hay Mills? Because I'll show you how close we are to Hay Mills. This is the dual carriageway. Right? right? This is Hay Mills. Let me come right out, right out, come on, come on, see, shows you there, there's a country road, come on, I did show you how mills, did show you, anyway, this area here, is hay mills, and then over here you've got, Toysley, Right, and over here, right over this side, this side here, this is all what I knew as Hay Mills. Right, from that road there, that main road there, down to here, to here, was like Hay Mills. Right, and this area here was. Brought to the green there, small heath. I knew this area here to be small heath. Yeah. I knew this area here to be Bordsley Green. So when they said the rights kicked off in Bordsley Green, I'm thinking, I know the area's changed, but surely it hasn't changed that much that I wouldn't recognise where I grew, where I used to go to. Um, a weekly, sometimes daily basis, because my sister lived in Boyle's Green at one stage. I had friends in Boyle's Green, right? I work. I used to go for, walk through Boyle's Green to get to my job at the hospital, right? So I knew that area fairly well. So I thought it hasn't changed that much, surely. And that's where I used to work. At the hospital. Many, many moons ago. Many, many moons ago. So that's Bulls the Green. You've got Small Heath as the Small Heath. Here. Right? You've got High Mills. 
So, and then you've got Yardley. Right? So, how can the clumsy swan be in Borsley Green? Can't. It is not in Borsley Green. So, I think these reporters out there need to get go on Google Maps and get their facts straight. It was not Borsley Green. It was Yardley. I'm not saying, oh, well, they've got the area wrong, so that's okay. Carry on with what you're doing. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that's just one area of the media getting their facts wrong again. Right? Now, I literally lived, right? This is where it all kicked off the other day here. I literally lived. There's the park I used to go to. Right? My sister also had a house around here, lived around here. I had friends who lived around here. Right? My house where I grew up was... Is it there? Here. Was it there? I think it's this road. Right? Yeah. I lived on that road. A four to five minute walk. Well, it can be a bit longer now because I'm older. Right? But that's how close it was to where I grew up, to where my mum was living in 2019, and to where my friends are, who I've got down in Birmingham still. I don't know if they still live there. I hope they don't because I take anyone to be caught up in that. But my thing is, why was the police not there? Right? Why was the police not here? This is the island where they're screeching around this island in cars. This is the pub where the lad got attacked. Right? Cars were being attacked, set on. Right? They said they went there because they was informed that far right, whatever, I don't believe in that, was coming to Birmingham. Well, I'm sorry. I, I'm so sorry. But why would they come to Yardley? They wouldn't. They wouldn't. If they was going to come to Birmingham, I'll show you where the city centre is. Why? If they was going to come to Birmingham, they would come here. Right? Here. This is the city centre here. Right? They would come there, the city centre. Because they'd be coming in by trains, by coaches, by cars. They're not going to go, oh, well, well, you know what? We're going to attack an area in Borsley Green. Well, if that was the case, they'd have been attacking here, this area. Yeah? Here. You may think that's pretty close to the clumsy swan. It is, in a way. But that's Borsley Green. That's Yardley. So if they was coming to Borsley Green, they'd be here. And look right next door, you've got Small Heath, you've got Allen Rock, right? All these places around Aston, all these places that border, Edge Bastard, Hockley, what else? Hansworth, Perry Bar, right? You've got all these areas surrounding the outskirts of the city centre. Right, Mosley, Spark Hill. I lived there. And you've also got Spark Brook as well. You've got Spark Hill, Spark Brook. Right? Kings, you've got all these areas, which is quite high high in um different cultures, as I'll say, right? So you, to get into the city centre, you've got to go through one of these areas. You've got to go through one of these areas. To get into the city centre. You really have. That's what I was saying last, last night of my life. 
Anyway, this is the clumsiest one where all this was kicking up. Right? And I am going to pull up, I'm gone, the a video of why there was no police. Right? Oh, God. Right. Here it is. It's only two minutes long, so we'll watch it all. Hold on. Let's share this. Probably families in there. Stupid of them to do that. In response to the intelligence that we received at that moment in time, what I would say is that the vast majority of people that attended that protest yesterday did so law-abidingly and they did it with the right intentions. There were just a small minority of people that attended there and were intent on causing either criminality, disorder or fear within our communities. What we saw was a response from our communities where they were trying to kind of make sure that that was policed within themselves as well and trying to deter people from taking part in that disorder. Um, and as a result, we've been able to go on, gather that evidence, gather that information. We have made arrests, well, we've made an arrest this afternoon. We continue to try and make arrests in terms of those people that were involved in those disorders. <laughs> So what I would say in respect of two-tier policing is it doesn't exist in the West Midlands. So we are here to police without fear or favour. We do that across a broad spectrum. As I've said, we respect people's right to protest and we will facilitate that right to protest. If people come and they are involved in criminality, we will deal with those people for criminality, regardless of what side of the protest group they're on. People have a right yeah. to protest. West Midlands Police completely respect that, but that protest needs to be lawful and it needs to be peaceful. If people turn up to create disorder, if people take weapons, if people are involved in criminality, West Midlands Police will relentlessly pursue you and bring you to justice. There is no place for disorder, criminality, or spreading that fear and hatred within the streets of West Midlands, and it won't be tolerated. BS. BS. Right? That is what he's reasoning was for no police and then he says there's no two-tier policing in the west midlands wow if there's no two-tier policing in the west midlands and you knew there was a, a protest going on why did you not one have some police in that area right but you didn't, they didn't even have one police officer. And I'll show you on the maps where, hold on. Right, there's the clumsiest one. Do you want to know where the police station is? Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Right. Let's go in a bit. Uh, the police station is around here somewhere. Eh? I'm trying to find it now. Unless I'd moved that. Um, is it up here somewhere? Put it this way, it's round here somewhere. Oh my God, the rain. I'm in my balcony now and I can hear the rain hit the window. It's coming down heavy here. The police station is around here somewhere. Right? So look where they go. They go up here to get in their little police cars, their little panda cars, to get all the way up here, up one road, may I say, one road all the way along here to there. Not even five minutes drive away. Right? Not even five minutes drive away. And they had not one police officer because they 
by was informed differently. Now we'll listen to this again. Right, let's go. So, listen to what he says again. Probably families in there. Stupid of them to do that. Man. in response to the intelligence that we received at that moment in time what i would say is that the vast majority of people that attended that protest yesterday did so law-abidingly and they did it with the right intentions yeah. there were just a small minority of people that attended there and were intent on causing either criminality disorder or fear within our communities what we saw was a response from our communities where they were trying to kind of make sure that that was policed within themselves as well and trying to deter people. No, policed within themselves. The community was policing themselves. Have you ever heard of anything like that anywhere in the UK? No. Why? There's no, you can't have communities policing themselves. You can't. We, they pay their council tax. They pay everything down in Birmingham. Council tax, you know, for the police service, right, for the police service, not for the community policing, not for the community to police themselves, because they might think, well, this isn't that bad, this is just a group of lads out on the street having fun, well, we don't need to worry about them, no, communities cannot police, we have our police for that and this guy here on the screen he needs gone he needs gone i'm sorry this broke my heart when i saw this going on the other day i was so upset i was shaking i don't know why i was shaking i don't know if it's because i was upset of it going on in birmingham or because of how close it was because i signed boys the green and that was still fairly close to where i grew up right and all that like i've got memories of going around board to the green and all those areas around there i grew up around those areas i grew up around Bury the green small heath and all that like i grew up there i used to go shopping in them areas you know what i mean with my mom with my dad so it brought back a, a lot of memories for me and to see people which i knew would happen i've been saying it for years this is going to happen. And it happened. And look what the police did. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mr. Policeman. What police? He is... He needs God. I'm sorry. I may get a knock on the door one day saying, oh, you've been saying threatening things. No, I haven't. I've been voicing my opinion. This guy needs God. We need someone in that area who can stand up and say, no, you're not going to police your own communities. We are the police. We get paid to do this job. We will police it. Not the communities. Sorry, not on. From taking part in that disorder. Um, and as a result, we've been able to go on, gather that evidence, gather that information. We have made arrests. Well, we've made an arrest this afternoon. We continue to try and make arrests in terms of those people. One arrest. They've made one arrest out of all those people. One arrest. Oh, and then they're going to continue to make arrests. How many? I, look at this video, right? Let's go back to that video. Where is he? Oh, no, it's not on there, sorry. Right, I'd have to pull the video up again. Right? But, it's just, brags, it's, I'm just utterly disgusted with the police as a whole, with the police in the West Midlands. And if anyone, if you can get out of there, if you don't feel safe and you've got somewhere else you can go and leave, just for a short time, not for good, not 
and that's for good and it's for a short time do so get your children out of there look google maps right you've got schooled all around this area you've got yardley primary school my my niece is to go there right you've got care homes you've got one up here somewhere i know this up here somewhere because i used to do some when i was at school you put on like um placement for like half a day at wherever and they put me at a care home right there's that one there's one round here somewhere right there's another one along here somewhere i believe it come up on the maps so let's have it pull it out on the maps let's see I've got fat. I had a sister who lived in Aycock Screen. Look where Aycock Screen is from there. And I know that's quite high popularity, popularity of popular, whatever, of a high cultural, whatever you want to call it. I've got to be careful what I say. Right, I've I've got relatives who li live up here. I've got relatives who live round here somewhere. So, and I noticed earlier, I did see earlier, like two care homes within walking distance of what went on here. Right? Two care homes with vulnerable adults in. And they're kicking off in an area here. Right here. And the police are five minutes away. If that. If that. And not one. I, I'm just disgusted. I'm just utterly disgusted with the West Midlands Police Force and their their excuse for not showing there. They should have, if they knew there was a protest on, they should have had police there. Full stop. And as I said, if you've got people coming in from outside of Birmingham, they're not going to go, oh, I'll tell you what, we'll go to this place in Bortley Green, which is right down here. Look, follow the road, right down here. Go along Hobmore Road, keep going. Right, I used to go to this park here. Right, keep going Hobmore Road, Borgesley Green, here we come. Right? Now, I'm not sure I should think this is Borgesley Green, this area, this side of that road. And I'd say this is Small Heath, this side. Right? It's very confusing. But you know, you know when you're going through certain areas where you are, put it that way. Right? So, what, why, if that was the case, if they was coming to attack people in Boards the Green, why was the kicking off up here? And not in Borgs the Green. Why was the kicking off in this island? Why? Why was the kicking off at this island? When. Oh God, what was I going to say now? I can't think what I was going to say now. It doesn't make sense. Oh, oh, they're kicking off this island. They all gathered here because they're there to protect their mosque. I don't know where the mosques are around there. I don't know where the mosques are in Yardley. I know there's some in High Mills. There's definitely in Small Heath and Borgs the Green and Allen Rock. I don't know about here. 
bound to be some around it, one around here somewhere. I wouldn't like to say where, right? But they all gathered here. They all gathered here, screeching round this island, attacking a man in this pub. Right? Attacking uh, car, uh, cars in the area. These are people that are hard working, go out seven, six, five, six days a week. Depending on what you work or depending on how much money you need to earn. You could be working six days a week. I know with my job when I worked in community care, I could be doing six days a week. I remember once I did 21 days straight without any days off. And that's not because I wanted the money. It's because they didn't have the staff to cover. So they put me on. And in the end, I said, I can't do no more. I need a break. I've just done 21 full days straight. I'm not sleeping. I'm not eating. You know what I mean? So eventually, they gave me a weekend off. But this is what I'm saying. People work hard. This is not... this. I used to go to, come to this area. You know what I mean? I go to the shops here. They've got homes down here. Homes up here, people living in houses up here, right? They got houses and people living. Look, they got people living along here. People are living above the shops here. You got families in that area, and where was the police? I'm calling West Midlands police out on this because that ex his excuse there. His excuse here is a load of BS. In response to the intelligence that we received at that moment in time. Well, your intelligence was... What intelligence? What intelligence? You knew there was a protest going on. So why didn't you have some police out there? What I would say is that the vast majority of people that attended that protest yesterday did so law-abidingly and they did it. I didn't see no protest. I didn't see no protest. Group of people standing there saying, let us stay. We are good people. We live here. We've got business. I didn't see none of them. You know what I mean? Didn't see none of them. But I've seen plenty of those. With the right intentions, there were just a small minority of people that attended there and were intent on causing either criminality, disorder or fear within our communities. What we saw was a response from our communities where they were trying to kind of make sure that that was policed within themselves as well and trying to deter people from taking part in that disorder. Um, and... As a result, we've been able to go on, gather that evidence, gather that information. We have made arrests. Well, we've made an arrest this afternoon. We continue to try and make arrests in terms of those people that were involved in those disorders. <laughs> so what I would say in respect of two-tier policing is it doesn't exist in the West Midlands. Let's play that again. Okay, so anyone misses that. So what I would say in respect to two-tier policing is it doesn't exist in the West Midlands. <coughs> oh, God. <coughs> I've just choked on my flipping nuts. Oh. Doesn't exist. Does not exist in the West Midlands. Well, I'm calling you out on this. Whatever your name is, right, whatever your name is, I'm calling you out now because 2 T policing does exist. That video showed it, right? Let's try and find something else. What is happening here? Right. 
All right? It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Oh, my God. That's why I was joking for. Wait. That's why I was joking for them. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've watched that clip of that video where it doesn't exist. <coughs> right? Um. Let's look at this one. Was thrown and others were injured too. Excuse me, excuse me. What about the innocent bystanders getting hit by stones and pieces of slate and boulders and you name it? Watch this guy in a minute as well. Watch this guy. So we had another person, he's in the hospital. See, he's holding his head. So it's Oh, I've really cut my head really bad. Why is he holding his head? We've just seen the little mark, the cut on his head, sorry. So why is he still holding his head? Oh, oh I've been hit on the head. Yes, hundreds, lots of people are hit on the head, mate. But they've not gone on YouTube going, oh, I got hit on the head. Oh, look. Oh, my head. Stop playing the sympathy cards. I'm fed up of this. Sympathy cards for this, and no, oh, you don't get no sympathy. But oh yeah, we we'll feel sorry for you. No, enough, enough is enough. Tell at the moment, so which is he cannot eat, so he cannot swallow food because the stone was hitting very heavily from here. Yeah. Police are still gathering CCTV from the mosque. A crowd who'd gathered here for prayers filmed as they came under attack. They've put up extra fences and are heeding police advice as they brace for more unrest. They're not feeling 100% safe at all. Women's wearing the... They're not feeling safe. What about the hundreds of thousands of Christians who aren't feeling safe? You can't go to work or go to the shops of fear of being attacked in their cars. What about them? Come on. This is not on now. The hijab, they are under, under risk. Uh, uh, they are more vulnerable. In other places, we've seen members of the Muslim communities arming themselves and going out on the streets. Could you see uh, that happening that, here? That's the totally wrong thing to do because uh, we have no weapon. We have police and government to protect us. And oh. You have police and government to protect you. What about us? What about the everyday English, Christian, Catholic, um, oh God, Jewish citizens out there? Are they not? Are they not entitled to the same um, care from the government? And the police, I don't know, I'm talking to them. We are shouting peace. In Birmingham on Monday, Muslims did take matters into their own hands. Some carried weapons amid rumours the far right were coming. Mm. There it is. There it is, I'm going to enlarge it. There it is, everyone. Weapon. So please, if anyone comes up to me again and says, oh, they were carrying weapons, I'm going to slap on one. Oh, we've got the proof that was carried. And one community officer is under investigation, I believe. I heard it on one, um, another YouTube channel. He's un they are under investigation for telling these Muslims in a crowd, 
before they went on their protest. If you've got any weapons of any sort, and we knew they had because we'd seen them standing there with the weapons, please leave them in the mosque. Uh, why wasn't they arrested? They had unlawful weapons. They should have been arrested there and then for holding at that flipping weapon. And then you stand there politely asking them to leave them in the mosque. That person needs gone. Get them out. The police now under pressure to explain why they didn't do anything to stop people who were clearly armed. A group then went on to attack a man at a pub, punching and kicking him. The violence was sudden and shocking for those who were watching on. The ones that were doing the fighting were trying to boot the door in. They cracked the glass over there, damaged the handle to the doors over that side. And we had to barricade the doors up with tables and chairs and stuff to make sure they couldn't get in, really. One of the demonstrations organisers has been to the pub to apologise and is urging calm in his community. The police are saying they're going to protect our mosques. Leave the police to do the job that they get paid to do. Because it's not nice to say, I'd rather one or two bricks go into the mosque and make the other side look bad, then we protect our mosque and then we have a breakaway that come and make this mess. He knows the actions of a few have given fuel to the far right, with many thousands of Muslims around the country fearful of what the coming days will bring. Becky Johnson, Sky News, Hull. And what about the many thousands of Christians and Catholics and Jews and all that? What about them? Don't you think they are sitting in their homes on a night time, fearful that their windows could be put through, their doors could be kicked in, their cars could be damaged? You know what I mean? Every community, every culture has a right to be protected by the police. As I've always said, I've got no, I have nothing to do, I don't care about what religion you are, I really don't. But what I don't believe in is how one certain religious group plays this uh, racist sort of card all the time. The sympathy cut. Look, I got hit on the head. Then he sits there with his hand on his head and says, Oh, God, it's really bad. You know what I mean? He's not the only one who got hit on the head with stones and pieces of slate and wood and whatever else and boulders. There was hundreds of others that got injured. I've seen them injured. So, where's the difference? Right. These of South, A South Asians descended onto the scene after a prior protest at uh, Bordesley Green about uh, half a mile away from this location. They started gathering about 5 p.m. on a roundabout by a McDonald's upon reports that a uh, so called far right protest and anti-immigration protests would be gathering there. No such protest occurred, but we did see that arrival of men in masks, many of them carrying weapons and threatening journalists. They then moved here. We can see some of the damage to the pub from last night. This window smashed in. And there's also some evidence of some of the barricading that took place last night. It was a karaoke night here at the pub. There were families inside, children, granddaughters attending this event when suddenly hundreds of men arrived. And I've watched some of the live streams of that footage last night where uh, those who were actually on their way to that location were saying that they were there to dominate and intimidate people. There was also a live stream of a police officer saying that what happened here last night was no different 
to a scuffle you might see on a Saturday night. Well, one person who did witness the scenes last night is the assistant. Right, no different from a scuffle you'd see on a Saturday night. Well, I've seen scuffles on a Saturday night, believe me, I have. Right? And it's like a punchy, a little bit of a fight club going on. You know what I mean? One on one or whatever. It's not nothing like that. Nothing. Not where they've got the control of the street, the control of that area, the control of the people coming and going. Nothing. If we saw that every weekend in a pub thing, oh my God, the whole country would have been on its knees years ago. You know what I mean? No different from a Saturday night scuffle. Please give me breath. But I still come back to the point. So these people have come from Borgsley Green, where the protest was going on, up to Yardley, hold on. Right, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Right. Have more work, do I? So the people have come let me just turn this a little bit. They have come from Borsley Green, right? Which is. There's my park I used to go to. That's changed. I now I've got path singing. I never used to have path singing. Um, is that a play area there now? Looks like a play area there. Right? See, Lockman's not there no more. Mm, the lockments aren't there anymore. Mm, no, the lockments aren't there anymore. No, oh, what a shame. There used to be a lockment there. Because my dad had one. That's the community centre, have more community centre. Right? And just here, round about here, Right, it's right about here. There used to be a big ditch. And that ditch was caused by a bomb in the wartime. Hmm. We used to sit in the trees in there because there's trees in this big ditch. And we'd sit in the trees and we could see who was coming. Or we'd sit there in the summer in the shade, you know what I mean? Because it was just... Anyway, coming off the subject. So this... These people have come all along Hardmore Road, right? Now take a look at the area they are coming through. Take a look at this area, where they are coming through. They've got full of houses. They've got another park area there, which I used to go to when I was younger. Right? Hay Barnes Road, yes, you know that road quite well as well. All the way along here. Oh, come on, come on, mum. Oh, come on. So, so you've got Humble Road still there. Yard of Green Road, Green Lane, right? So this is Borg the Green. So a protest was going on, started around here. Right? Yeah? Okay. But then, it got out that apparently a far-right group was coming to town. As I said, a far-right group, why would it go to Yardley? Why? It would go to the city centre, not to Yardley. But you look, right? They have come all the way down this road, be by car or walking, 
there's houses, there's families, there's children. They're all marching, coming past this road, shouting, whatever, all the way down here. All right? All the way down here. All the way down here, all these houses here, on this road here. Right. There could have been children or whatever playing over here. We don't know. Possibly. They've come all the way up this road, past these houses, and started the rampage up here. And so where was the police? Again, where was... I know I keep harping on about the police, but this just disgusts me. And then he has the nerve to stand there and say there's no two-tier policing. And how the community, they liaised with the community and community policing themselves. No! No! They don't police themselves. Not happening. Not happening. You do not police yourself. That's like, you know how the police say, if something happens in the police force, they say, Probably families in there. It's stupid of them to do that. Man. They say, uh, they're looking into, the police are looking into this. That's the police looking into the police, yeah? And we never trust them, do we? We don't trust the police looking into the police. Because they're not going to find anything bad on the police. Come on. Right? So, when you say the community is police, uh, policing themselves. Yeah, right. We placed in response to the intelligence that we received at that moment in time. What I would say is that the vast majority of people that attended that protest yesterday did so law-abidingly and they did it with the right intentions. There were just a small minority of people that attended there and were intent on causing either criminality, disorder or fear within our communities. What we saw was a response from our communities where they were trying to kind of make sure that that was policed within themselves as well and trying to deter people from taking part in that disorder. Um, and as a result, we've been able to go on, gather that evidence, gather that information. We have made arrests, well, we've made an arrest this afternoon. We continue to try and make arrests in terms of those people that were involved in those disorders. I continue to try. Hmm. Let me think on that. They continue to try to make a rest. No, not good enough. Not good enough. You failed that community in your group. You failed those families all along the Hobmore Road. From Ball to the Green to the, uh, what I call the U Tree, which is now. I still call it the U-Tree because I know it as the U-Tree. Right? All the way from Bulls to Green along the Hubmore Road up to the U-Tree. You failed those families. You failed all them families living in and around the area of the U-Tree. You failed them. And we are, these people are supposed to believe you and trust you? Come on. How can they ever trust you after you failed them so big, so drastically? And Key Starmer, what can I say? He's come out and he's dropped the file right now. After the protest like this in Birmingham, oh no, he's dropped the file right now. Everyone involved. He's got to be punished. Notice he's bringing everyone out. And not just the so-called far-right 
people like me, who's a mother, a grandmother, who loves her, who cares about her children, wants her grandchildren to grow up in a world, in a country that believes in the truth, right? Who believes in protecting their own, yeah? And looking after their own. We are sending billions abroad, yet this winter, a uh, lot of quite a few pensioners are going to lose their winter fuel payments because they haven't got the money. So those who aren't claim, those who've got a normal pension, like who doesn't claim. Uh, universal pension or things like that, right? Those who claim their normal pension that they've worked for all their lives are now not going to get help with their winter fuel payments because they haven't got the money. But they've got the money to spend billions abroad and things like that. Check it out before, if you don't believe what I'm saying, Go on Google, check all this out. Find this information for yourself. It's out there. Go on Google. You don't have to go on YouTube. You don't have to go on Twitter. You can go on Google and find this information out. But please, I'm going to leave it there because I can't go on no more about the West Midlands Police. I can't. It makes me sick that there's five minutes away, five minutes away from where they were, and they couldn't even go up and stop it. How many phone calls did they receive from concerned people that night about these crowds? How many phone calls did they receive from the public? I bet you they received a lot, and they did nothing. I'm so angry. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. If you... Let me know in the comments. Leave me a comment. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think? Do you believe there's two t t policing? Do you not? Do you think that was right not to go there? Do you believe it's right to let the communities to police themselves and things like that? Let me know your opinions. I do read them all. So until then, hold on. Until then, stay safe and I'll see you all soon. Mm-hmm.